Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to look into the HTTP methods when we are creating a REST API. Um, I have seen oh, yeah, all of these uh, methods, they're very often being misused. Um, sometimes people do just create uh, a REST API only with posts, only with, with post mappings, uh, because that's just easiest and you don't have to think about it. If you are, maybe maybe a, a developer has been coding some uh, a GraphQL, a GraphQL uh, input, uh, backend, then, uh, then, then all, all of the requests are, of course, post requests, and that habit might actually uh, be, be taken to your team, where you, are, where you are coding your REST uh, API. And this is what I want to target today, because we want to use these REST HTTP methods correctly. And if we start, if, if you look up the, um, the description for when they should be used, then we can see get, they should be, uh, they should be used when we want to get and, and, and uh, retrieve data, that's fine. Then we have post right here. The post uh, is used for when there is, can be side effects on the server. So this means that if you want to create a new object, for instance, then you might only want to use posts. If you want to edit an, an existing object with, the, with all of the member variables, then you want to use put if you read right here. So then you use put instead. So the, the put method replaces all current representations of the target resource with the request payload. And this is exactly what we're going to do tonight. We're going to create a REST API where we are following these principles right here. Delete mapping that is used when we want to delete a resource. And uh, so that is actually the ones that we are going to use. We're going to use get, post, put, and delete. And we're not going to use the other HTTP methods, um, which are right here. Let's get started. First of all, we are creating a new project by pressing File, New Project right here, Spring Initializer, choosing, um, choosing uh, Maven, Java 18, yes, and compa compatibility with 17. I could also choose 18, actually, um, the next. Then I add Lombok, of course. First you ask, uh, first, you, first you talk to your team, and then uh, you're, you're the client when you want to use Kotlin. If you're allowed to use Kotlin, then of course you choose Kotlin right here, and then you're very happy, and then you, you will be a much more efficient developer, but um, you will probably turn down because not that many people in the world knows Kotlin as compared to how many people actually knows Java. That is the usual uh, argument, so you will be turned down. So no Kotlin for us, uh, but that means that we just enable Lombok instead then we get some of the features. Um, then we add Spring Web because we want to have a REST interface. Then you need the Spring Web right there. To begin with, the, you're told by your, your by your, your your tech lead and your team lead, um, and also by uh, by yeah uh, by by everybody. You're told by everybody that the that your that your databases will not be available to begin with. Um, so they hope that that was that is not an impediment for you. But of course, it is not because you will just add the H2 database right here. It's also much easier to code against. It's much faster. Um, so how do we do that? We use something called JPA, Java, uh, Java Persistence Annotation. Uh, this means that uh, you're not writing ESQLs. Some of your team members might, uh, might might think, okay, how can we do this without SQLs? SQLs are just so fast and easy. Now we have to know how this weird JPA stuff works. That is exactly correct, but you will be much happier when you know the APA and uh, you will actually be compliant with all with, with all databases. Some people will actually use the argument that if you want to change the database one day, then the APA, um, then when you use the APA, you can just do that. That is not a valid argument because you never change your you never change your production database uh, in practice. I have never experienced that at all, uh, and I have twenty plus, even more twenty five plus uh, years of experience in the business. I have never had. A a project where we had to change the database, the production database to another type. So that is not the situation. We want to use JPA so we can use a H2 database when we are coding locally. And then we want to use uh, the real database when we are placing stuff on the development environment, the test environment, the integration environment, and maybe also staging environment, if you have that, and also the production environment, of course. So then we have, we have data, we have H2, we have Spring Web, we have Lombok. Then we press create, and then we're happy, and we end up with a project like this. And you can just have an empty application.properties uh, to begin with, and you can say that the, the, the default application.properties will support your development. This means that this will support your H2 uh, database and uh, how to do stuff uh, yeah, uh, when, when, you, when you're coding. 
Uh, one thing I would recommend you to set is the context. I have seen a lot of uh, the spring dot web dot the context. The context. How do we set the context? The spring the web context. I've forgotten what it's what it's called actually. So context path. Yes, server servlet context. But that that was it. Yeah. So the context path, you want to set that right here instead of setting it in each of your REST controllers. Then the context path, if you're not aware of it, that is the beginning of the URL that you're exposed. So I want to, this This could be, this is a program that would actually store some messages and then they will, they will save them for, for later use and then they will actually return those messages when they are needed. So I will have something like um, message app like this. I think actually I need the forward slash right there. So this is my context path. I might have to remove the forward slash, but uh, let, let's see what that. So this is my message app. This means that if I want to change the the, the, the default context uh, uh, later on, then it's much easier. Um, so, okay. So now let us create. Uh, so now the first the first task that we get from um, yeah from the backlog um, the, and uh, from our active sprint, because we, of course we're running Scrum, everybody's running Scrum nowadays. We want to be agile, we want to have the feeling that we are doing the right thing, like the rest of all of them, like, like, like our competitors, of course. So we want, to, we want to have this feeling that we are doing things the right way, so we run Scrum. And the, one of the tasks that you actually have is to create, um, you, want to, you want to expose an endpoint that can actually take a, a string, so, there, so which, actually, which actually stores, which is a message, and you, you want to store a message, and then, um, then, then, uh, yeah, then you have another uh, task that says that you want to then retrieve that message and expose that message to, to someone, to another IT department. So first of all, uh, you go talk to that other IT department because you do not want to have an endpoint that actually takes a string. You want you want to deal with objects because you know that the next thing is that you just don't you don't want to just 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 to take a string or maybe you also want to include a description that that might come very soon. So instead of just taking a string, I'll just create one package right here. So I'll say message. And, we're, and again, right here, we are creating our packages, uh, so it's business context. We are not creating a package named controller. We are not creating a package a package named service. And we're not creating a package named model, and then we are putting all of our model stuff down there. It is, it, it's much easier to find if you use the business context right here. So the first thing we would actually do is that we will actually start with our data model. So we want to, to model, uh, to, of course, you can also do that somewhere else and then in your code, but I actually find that most of the times, the easiest thing is actually to um, to model it in code. And if you want to, I like to to post fix um, the entities with entity because then I can see afterwards which ones are the entities and which one are the ones uh, which one are the classes that I use for my API. Let me just show you. So um, entity. So this is an entity like this. And I want to use all my Lombok stuff. You do not want to add data because what uh, what data does, it will also create a string method. It will also create a hash code and equals method. And those uh, might actually create um, circular references when you are dealing with um, when you are dealing with uh, uh, relations between other to, to other uh, yeah to other entities. And so you don't want to do that. You want to if you want to, you can add getters. That's okay. You can also add the setters. You can also add a no arcs constructor if you want to. You can also add the all arcs constructor. I definitely recommend you to add the builder because that's the best way to create a, an instance of a new class. Use the builder pattern. If you don't know what it is, then watch my video about the builder uh, pattern uh, instead. Then we have the builds right here. I also want to add one more access. Uh, I know it's it's experimental with Lumbach, but it has been there forever, or as, as long as I remember. Uh, and here we can actually say that we want uh, we want to be able to chain. We want chain equal to that means that whenever I'm setting something, then I then all of my setters they will actually return the uh, the object itself, and that means that then I can call multiple setters in a row, and it may just makes my code uh, much more. Uh, yeah, it looks much. Uh, it's much more concise. So then we also want fluent. We want fluent equals to true. That means that uh, then we will not get the get and the set, I think. That's actually what it means. Uh, let us just check that in just a minute. I want an ID, of course, and I want this ID to be a generated value, and the generated value is that the, the strategy can just be, uh, just be automatically. 
So uh, Hibernate and JPA will automatically find a way to create um, to create an ID like, like this. And sometimes it will use a sequence named Hibernate underscore sequence. And then you have to create that uh, sequence on inside your inside your database, inside your HACE2 database, for instance. Um, so that means that if you want to design and design your, your database yourself, maybe with liquid base uh, scripts, then um, then you have to create a hibernate underscore sequence uh, yeah, to, to, to generate these values right here, just so you know. And you will actually get a very clear message that says, and a, a nice exception that says that you have not created the, hi the hibernate underscore sequence uh, in, the, in the database, so please do so. Then we want to have a, and again, all of these are private because the Lombok will actually create all of the public uh, getters and setters. So then we have private, and then we have, then we have the message itself that is just a string. And even though we only have one uh, one piece of data here, right? We have the we have the message right there. Um, we could also have something like local date time. We we know that um, for debugging, then it could be nice to see when this has been saved. Um, last update time or something like that. Um, save time. So that is the time and local day, date and the time for when it has actually been uh, saved. That's quite cool. So now that we don't have the data, we, we do not have the we not have the data because we don't want a, an automatic to string. Because the problem is that if we get a if we use the the to string uh, from Lombok right here, then it will also create a, uh, uh, then it will also use the references to other entities. And if those uh, entities then also have a reference to this entity, then you will get a circular uh, reference. Um, so. Um, so we actually we don't want to use the, we don't want to use this to string right here and there's something that we can actually exclude fields and something like that um, uh, we will look into that another day uh, not now but what I want to do instead of using the to string and uh, using data then I actually want to create it manually this time I press alt insert so that means I will actually have IntelliJ to create this if I had any instances right here then I would leave out my instances but now I get this nice to string method right here which I'm quite happy for, so that's uh, happy with. So that's quite good. So okay, so now I have my the, so this is my um, this this is my uh, yeah this is my data model. Actually, it's quite simple. So the first thing I actually will go and uh, uh, I will do it is actually I will go to this other IT department in the company and then I will say that um, I've gotten this task. I, I know that you want to save this data. This means that you need to uh, give me data in this format right here. Where you can would just say you would actually just say message. You you'll just have a a, a JSON a JSON message you, with with the message inside, and then you'll tell them to, um, to uh, yeah to to give that object instead of just the, the message. And let me just show you uh, what the difference is and what I mean. Because now I will create the message controller. You you can also call it rest controller if you want to. Um, the only reason why you should do that is if you want to, if you also have other controllers, maybe you use something called time leaf, then you um, then you have these uh, web MBC format, and then you're also using other types of controllers. But if you are just, if you only have REST controllers, feel free just to use controller as postfix. And you can see again, I'm placing it in the same uh, folder as message right here. So it's business context we go for. We do not make and we do not create a new package named controller, and then we place all of our controllers in there because it would just it would just be messy. So it would not uh, it would not help us find uh, and, and navigate to our controller. Most of coding is actually the, the ability to uh, navigate to the right class at the yeah at the right moment. And then we say this is a risk controller like this. We say this. Request mapping like right here, and this is where I don't want to see something like message app, and then um, in the beginning right here because we have already given the context in the um, in the context path right here. Here we say this is the message app. That that's why I have this field actually. Most of the times I think those these should actually be just a root or maybe just blank um, because. Yeah, there's no there's no need for usually for for prefixing everything with something weird. Um, but if you have that need, then uh, in this situation we have that need for some reason. Maybe it's we have some traffic that is uh, routed to our application because it has that uh, message app in front of it. Um, so 
that is with request mapping. Then we want to create, then we want to be able to create a new object. And when we, if we look at this documentation right here, we, when we want to use the, we want to create a new object, then we want to use posts. So that means that we will say this is a post mapping, and then we will say, and then we will like to say that this should just be root, uh, or we will not actually mention anything. And also write new. That's also some uh, someone also does that like this. And the request mapping, we don't we don't need anything there. So then we have the post mapping there. Then it says new, and then it says then we will create a public, and then we will return message entity. It's always nice to return something, and you should not, never return the entity. You want to have a you want to have a rest response. Sometimes I like to create a rest response like this, well by prefixing rest response, and then I will say um, new message like this, because it's it's very easy to find afterwards uh, when you want to uh, when you when you when you want to to find this class right here. And then we say new message like this, and then we will say uh, request body. We will actually take the body. And then we will say that the body should be a REST request new message. So this, again, this is a class that does not exist yet. And then we will just say um, new message, uh, request, request new message like this. And now I want to create my two, uh, my, my two API um, classes right here. You can say, but now you have to create all of these classes. It's not annoying. And here it's okay to use data because here we don't care about the, there's no circular references when we are dealing with these REST classes right here. We will ensure that. So that here it's okay with the data. It's okay with the builder. It's okay with the nuance constructor so it can be serialized. All our constructor, okay with that also. That's fine. And here we have them. Then, and then we, then we can say actually create a REST response public, uh, the static, and then we can say, um, uh, rest response, rest response, new message, and then we can say from entity. So this actually will actually use our entity. It will use our entity, the database row, if you will, the database object. It's not a row, it's an object because you can, of course, span over multiple tables. So we have the, 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 the object right here, and we want to convert that into, um, into this class right here. And to begin with, we just want to return private uh, string. We want to have message. Usually, we can actually, um, a lot of times, you can actually copy these. Uh, you can actually copy the, uh, the fields from your entity. So and then your question is, but why don't we just then use the entity and return that? And um, there's a good answer to that. That is, uh, we don't want to uh, to mix together how uh, the the JSON generation with the database. Um, yeah, but how how our database actually looks like, and maybe we don't want the local date time. We don't care about that. We don't want to return that to begin with. It could also be that we want to return this, and maybe we also return want to return something else like um, a receipt, like local date time. This is the receipt. Receipt date time. So this is the time where we actually generated generated the, the, the response. We can also call it response actually. Let's call this response response date time like this. And then we create this from the entity, and we say um, new. Re, okay, we actually say rest response new message. Then we use the builder pattern, of course, and then we end up with a build sometime, but not yet. But we return this result right here, and then we will say. Dot, and here you can actually see because I chose that X because I added that access on the lump box. Now I, I'm not I'm not using set message. I can just use message like this. So I'll actually use message, and then I'll add the string from the entity. Entity get message like this, and let me just check what it actually returns. So it, it returns the string. Yeah, it actually returns. It actually returns the, uh, the entity itself right now because I have added. I was a bit too smart there actually. Or was I? Uh, no, I was not. I was not too smart because no, that was fine. It's totally fine. Sorry, we're using the builder pattern. I just confused myself there. Sorry about that. I'll go back to this one right here. Dot message, and then we say um, entity. Yeah, this is actually the getter. So this is the getter of the entity that we're using right there. Uh, just for fun, we will also add the accessors right here. We will say fluent true and we will also say chain true like that. I really like those. Then we can say dot 
response date time. And here we can say local date time dot now. So that is right now. And then we can say that save time and that will then be the entities save time like this. And we can also add the ID because if uh, if we give the ID to if we give the ID to yeah, to the, to the IT department, then they can choose to delete this message later on if you want to. They can also retrieve it again to see uh, maybe maybe we have we have enriched the data maybe with with something else, and then they can uh, then uh, extract and see this data. So we will just say entity.id like this. So with us no get us no set us this code is much cleaner. And um, the only downside by using these accessors right here is that it is it is an experimental package of Lombok. It's a bit annoying because then. So yeah, of course your tech lead might come and say this is experimental, so you should not use that. And then of course you say, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, no. And then you delete that line, and then you will see all those ugly getters and setters in front of all of your fields. Um, in, in this situation, of course, it's just getters right now that we are creating. So now we actually have a cool method for actually creating a REST response new message from a an entity. It did not take us long, but it will actually save us a lot of headaches in the in the future. Um, because um, when you try to mix, it is difficult enough sometimes to have your entity right here and to have all of your relations. That can be difficult enough. If you also try to make it make the JSON looks nice, look nice with annotations like uh, JSON ignore and stuff like that, it just becomes very very ugly. I really like to have separate classes for for separate um, for separate purposes, right? So that is actually what we are doing right here. <clears throat> Create new class, yes. And again, right here, um, sometimes you can actually say that you want to. Um, so this is the request new message. You can actually sometimes you can actually say that you want to uh, use the same, but because the request and response are so um, they're so alike, so you can actually say that that this was actually this would actually be the same one. But now we are we're not we're not lazy, so we will just. Let me paste this part right here. So this is the request. This is the data that we need from. This is the data that we need from, uh, from from whoever calls us. And what the data we actually need is it's not the same time. It's not the response time. We just we also don't know, don't want an ID. We just want the message, and then we will actually create a new uh, message. Um, yeah, from that. Here we have the message controller. Now it is almost happy. So now we say, now we need to now we need to store it, and that means that we need the repository. That means that we need we need a we need a way to store this entity right here. And the easiest way is to use use Spring Data repository. So we say message repository like this, and that is an interface. And here we say extends. And if you don't know what what is to extend, then you can just um, yeah just be um, just just use your JPA repository. Some people also use the cool repository. Which is also fine. Um, it just means that then you will not get the possibility to flush. Um, so always just just use the API repository. I would like to say. Um, and then we have the message entity right here. That is the type. These are the generics and the long. That is the ID um, of our message entity right here. And you can see that we don't need to write any code. We don't need to write any messages. Uh, we don't need to write any skills right now at all uh, because we can just use our now I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a small trick here. I'll say required acts constructor. This means that if I have a private final message repository right here, like this, that means that there will actually be a constructor will actually be created with this message repository right here, and then we will actually get be get in, in constructor injection right here, which means that the the message repository will be injected automatically. So just a small trick. Uh, definitely do not use auto wired. You can only you should only use auto wired in your tests, not in your real code. And why not? Because it's more difficult to test if you are using auto wired in in your real code. It's, it is only for testing testing purposes. So, okay, so now we have the post mapping. This is because we want to create a new one right here. So we are going to create a new one. We will say message repository that save the new ent ent entity that we're going to create. So we could do two things. We can do, multi do multiple uh, things. Actually, it's a little bit ugly to save, um, to, to use uh, the repository inside the controller. You can do that, but I would definitely recommend that you create a service instead. So then you would actually say message service like this. And then we'll go back and we'll steal the code, steal that code. 
And then instead you would actually say that this would be service. And then you would actually say that uh, you should have message service, and then you would say save. And then you could actually say that you want to just to save the rest request message directly. So you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to think about all of that. So you just want to save this directly. And what we will you get back right here, you will actually get a, you will actually get an entity back because the, you are, yeah, that's, that's a bit difficult. You could actually say that the service should actually generate one of these, the, the responses also. Yeah, we could actually do that. The service is, uh, of course, something that you serve us. So we will use this also. So that means that I'll just return. And then again, I don't need to save it like this. I'll just say return. And then we need to create this save. Oh, create new. Create new. So now we created that method right there. And then the signature was just given to us. Oh, that is an error right there. Ah, I forgot to change the type right here. So we need to say service also right there. Create the method. Yes. So now we've got the right method. Of course, I need to clean up now because I made some mess. Right there. Let me just delete that. Control Y, delete line. Then we say, okay, here, here, this is a service. So we just annotate that with service. <clears throat> it is just the same as if you you can also annotate it with components. There's also some people that do that. I like to annotate it with service just to show it as a service. It has some. I think there's actually some things it can do if you, uh, with Spring Cloud. Um, but we we are not going to dig into that today, and we are not going to use it anyway. But it is you can actually also see it uses component right there. So yeah, so, com so component or service here, both both would be fine. And then we would actually create a new entity. So we will say message entity like this. And then we'll actually say builder. And we need a one, so we will also call build and end right here. Builder, and then we will say ID. We don't know about the ID should be null because this should be generated automatically. And then we want to have the rest request message right here. And then we will say a message. Request request uh, message right here. Why does it? Ah, I forgot all of the annotations. That's why it's okay that that's data because as soon as you're dealing with something that actually uh, takes JSON or, or, or is a conversion from JSON or, uh, or, con or is being converted into JSON, then just add data that will give you to string equals and um, hash code and also getters and setters. And then you also want, you still want the builder right here. We don't want to build. We actually not creating this, so we don't want that. But we want you want the no ask constructor because uh, Spring Boot has to tr has to create uh, has to be able to create an instance of this. That means that uh, yeah, then it needs to be serializable. So it also needs to um, to have a no ask constructor, and it also I think it, I'm not sure if it needs all ask constructor. I don't think so actually, but I always add it anyway. Okay, so then we oh get and, and set that is really ugly, right? We do not want to use getters and setters, so we'll also add accessors. Now this is our this is our application right here, right? So no one decides whether we can use fluent and chain. We want to use that, of course. And then we say message, so that means we use the getter right there. Then we can say save time, save time. That is actually now local date time dot now, so that is the same time. And then we say builds. So now we have that entity right down. That is our entity, new, new entity. And then we can save that with the, then we can save that with the required ask constructor. Then we can save that with the, with the repository, message, reposit, message repository, like that. Yes, message repository. You can see here now I actually have uh, an, an import right here, and this is because I've 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 set this I've not set this until here up as uh, with my with my usual settings, and uh, of course whenever you say something save something, then you should have until here, um clean up all of your imports automatically, and you can do that by pressing Control and S to get to settings, and you can also find them here, file, and then uh, manage ID settings. Uh, sorry, what were the manage ID settings right here? 
settings repository. No, sorry, here it is. Settings up here. Control ls. Yes, that is. Control ls. Then I end up there again. And then I can search for save actions or something like that. Actions on save. Yeah, here they are. Reformat the code. Yes, please. Optimize the code. Yes, please. And um, rearrange code. Ah, I'm not sure about it. Let us just enable today. So usually I don't keep that one on, I think. Um, so build project. No, we do not want to. Do not enable this. This will just make everything so slow and you will be... Um, You'll be very unhappy. The, the good things about enabling this build project is if you're if you're doing a lot of refactoring and if you're changing a lot of stuff, um, then you'll find your compilation error uh, earlier. But it's it's okay because you're going to run your unit test. Of course, you're going to spin up your application before you commit your code, or at least before you push your code. Um, so then you'll find all of those compilation errors. Uh, yeah, if you're using Eclipse, then the first thing Eclipse developers they do is they go and 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 uh, take this one off, and then they get something that is just as slow and useless as. Uh, in Eclipse, that was not nicely said, I know that, and I don't mean it uh, 100%, mean it a little bit, maybe I mean it 100%, I don't know actually, now, now I am actually confused, okay, let us continue now, um, <clears throat> so I have my repository right here, and I just say save right here, and here you can actually see, well, here we also have the flush. Uh, flush means, that means that if you're inside a transaction, if, you, if you're if you uh, inside a method, then you can annotate your method with transactional. And then if you want to flush something halfway through your transaction or something like that, then you can use flush. Uh, we do not want to do that. We just want to save this entity, new entity like this. And the difference is now that it should actually have an ID. So the ID should then be... Um, be, be set on this one right here. Uh, rest response, new message. Now I have actually already created this. Um, I created this from entity, and then we can give it the entity, and then we can return that from the service. So let us see if this works. So now we have a lot of classes, and we have a controller, we have a repository, we have an entity, so we have a lot of, but you can actually see the, the, the controller is very, very simple. Post mapping, and then of course all of the all of the dirty work is done by the message service right here, and by the repository regarding saving the data. So what should we do now? We should actually, uh, we could try to curl this to test that it works. Instead, I want to, I actually just want to create a test. So how do we do that? How do we create a test? I'll go to the top right here, I press Alt Insert. And then I go and create my test right here, and then I'll say yes, create a test for a new message. I'll annotate this will spring boot test like this, and then I will auto wire my controller, message controller, like this, message controller, and then I would say message controller, that's new message. Then I'll create a new rest response, rest, rest request, new message like this. That it doesn't have the builder. Okay, let us just add the builder actually. So we'll do that. Add builder. We need it for we need it for unit testing. I know it's a bit. We only need it for unit testing, but we still add this uh, add the builder pattern right there. It's okay. We can kind of explain what is doing, what is happening. So we say message. And then we create the message. This is a hello. This is a message. And what else do we need? So we, need, we don't need to add anything else. else actually, we just add, need to add that and what we expect. Then we get the response. So we'll just say response. And then we, we then we need to search something because a good test always has some, some assertions. So what will we assert? We'll assert not null. I said not null, and that would be the response itself, of course. Uh, duplicate, control D right now, and then we'll say, um, yeah, the ID should also not be null. And of course, we can see, we can check off that all of these should not be null. We can also check that um, should equal equals set equals, and then we could say that the message should be equal to the string right here. some message. I'm just changing it to a constant. Final string some message. Like this. 
And now we have this, and then we will say that the, the response should still be the same as what we put in. The, the message should not have been obfuscated or something like that. Another thing we can do is we can actually print out or oh, the, the response in the end just to see how it looks. What it looks like, like this. And then we want to run the test, and then let's see if we are if we are happy or if we created some errors on the way. So that's actually it. We we got the ID, we got the message right here. We have the save time right there, and we also have a response date time right there. So that, that is response date, date time, and that is the save date time. They're almost the same, but there are actual changes. We can see that on the last digits right there. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. We have a green test. So we are actually quite happy. But we, yeah, of course, when we are dealing with REST and we were, when we are playing around with the methods also like we are now, we want to use the right methods for the right things. Then we want to... Then we want to, uh, let me just get there, control uh, N. Then I can get my class and I will also just get my controller. Mrs. Controller. And that is actually another way, another reason why you want or your context to be, your packages to be business context oriented is that you can actually press control N. And then if you have a lot of controllers, you just write controller and then you'll get all of your controllers listed right there. So that means you do not, you do not need also, you don't also need a package where, uh, where you have all of your controllers inside. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not needed. If you want to have the overview of which endpoint is, is uh, exposed, then I have created another video to get that overview. It's also easy. But what we want to do now is actually we want to use the HTTP client. Look what we have right here. Okay, first, let us start the application. Spring Boot application right there. Press play. If you don't know what, what this actually is, then um, then go press edit configurations. And you can see we have a Spring Boot. We get this automatically when we create a new project. This chooses a JDK to run. It, it chooses an application, uh, main, a main class to run. And it also here you can also also set the actual profiles. This would actually this means that the, that we at syntax with the minus d something um, will actually be created for you if you have more than one profile. Maybe you have a profile for developing against the H two database, and maybe you also have one to develop against the real um, uh, yeah the, the real database that you're using on your other environments. Could be Postgres, MySQL, MSSQL, Oracle. Use Postgres. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. And then um, I've created another video where I compare MySQL and Postgres. Um, MySQL is also okay, but Postgres, I just prefer Postgres. Um, what was it that we want? Yeah, we want to start up the application. Let us start it now. So we will start up the application. Now it started, it took, it took 1.4 seconds. That is quite fast, right? That, that is because H2 is a memory database. It will just create a new memory database. Uh, yeah for us to use. So now we will check that if whether it works or not. So I'll go to HTTP client right here. Create request in HTTP client. What now? What is this? Okay. Get. No, it's not a get. It is a post. And how do we post something right here? Okay, we can actually click examples right here. Post requests. Let us, let us just check. Oh! Now we got a post request instead of a get request. That means that now we can actually delete. Then I can delete this one, this down here, this right here. Oh, it's actually read only. So, okay, I can copy this it's because it's an example. So I can copy this part right here, copy. And then we can then go back to my. Then we can go back to. This is still examples. I just want to, okay. I just want to press up here again. I just want to make sure that I'm not. Uh, I think actually I was okay. Here now we're back. REST API .http. Yes. So this is my file right here. Scratches and consoles. Yeah. Okay. So now I want to take this and I want to paste this one right here. So this is post. It's not HTTPS. We do not have any uh, certificate or anything. So I run. I'll write uh, localhost port eighty eighty. Yes. And now we need our context, and we should also be able to see the context somewhere up here. Message app. Yes, right here it is. Application web context right here. It says that this is message app. That means that we will write message app. 
and then we have to then we were writing new because we had uh, new as the I'll just show you if you forgot inside the controller right here we have uh, we have mapped we have mapped that to new so we need to post one of these that means there's something with message in it and then uh, we need to post that to to the endpoint so here we have new here we have the header you need to set in the header that this content is JSON or else you will get an error when you try to post up to uh, Spring Boot. An ID, no, we do not need that, definitely not. We need the message. And then we need, to, then here we can save the message and we can see oranges are good or whatever you feel like. Then you press play right here and let's see what happens. Localhost 8080, rest API. Post that. What is happening? Analyzing. Why is it analyzing? Should just run. This is incredible. Message app new. Hmm. Okay. Why is nothing happening? This is incredible. I would just, this is, why is it analyzing? You should just run right. Okay, this is a little bit weird. Um, not acceptable. So here's the response, not acceptable. Okay, this is a little bit, uh, I would not have expected that. Let me just check right here. Post to new. Let me just check if the, let me get the controller right here, request mapping. Mm. Okay, let's just add message and then new right here. It is a message, so it's okay to have the context in it actually. So message app, message and then new. Post mapping. Yeah, that should be totally fine. I have an all eyes constructor, all eyes constructor, string message right down. Did we get any problems in the run? No. Okay, let us just um, let us just run again. So we say application content type, application, JSON, message app, and let me say message. It might be this context right here that I ruined actually. Not acceptable, hmm, okay. Let me remove that just for fun. Or let me set it to this actually instead. Boom, boom, boom. Let us run again. Okay, I need to start up. Um, Please start up and then we run again. Must start with blah blah and not end with okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is the request body. We did that. We did that request body. That should be okay. Post mapping. Message new. Let me just remove the. Um, I'll just remove this just so I know that this is not what actually noises. Localhost 8080. Or maybe it is because we need, instead of localhost, maybe I need to use IP. Let me just see what the server says right here. What is the name of the server? Okay, okay, let us, I have a good idea now. Let us just press play right here. Not acceptable, then let's try 
Put some seven. Yes, you're one. Okay. Then let us use curl. So let's curl. And we'll actually type the command in here, actually. This is a little bit annoying. Yeah, I would just have expected this just to work, actually. Um, so message oranges are good. This should be totally fine. HTTP client, you uh, failed me. Or maybe it's, just, it's probably something I did, but uh, I'll just create a new directory. We'll name this curl. Then we'll create some curl scripts in here. We'll say uh, post, uh, postdata.sh. And then we'll say curl minus h for header. Then we'll say uh, content type application JSON. And then we'll say minus d for data. And then we will just post this data right here. And I don't need to get set the method, I think. Uh, minus, oh, we can do that. X post. So this is the method. And then we say, um, you would actually like to use, uh, and then we use the single quotes in here. Then we say message like this. And then we say test one, two, three. And then we end it. like this. So let's try that. Copy. I'll run. Yeah, we need the, end, of course, we need the endpoint. Localhost 8080. HTTP. And we need slash message slash new. Mm -mm -mm. What does I hear it here? It's because it's using PowerShell by default. Yeah, I need some settings. I need to change some settings right here. So I'll go to my terminal. Connection refused. That is a little bit weird. Do I have some kind of firewall running or something? Maybe I do. I think I have there's some security right now that says uh, denied or something. Yeah, that's a little bit weird. I will look into that. Go to the pay media type, not acceptable exception. Okay, it's the media type. That is really, it should be able to content type application slash JSON. Mm, that is a little bit weird. Let us just check that. Spring Boot. Uh, should she be okay? Why does it do that? I'm trying to what does it here? Public get us uh, okay, okay. It's because I've created my my okay, my request is, is made wrong. So I'll just change this right here. Accesses ah okay, okay. The accesses was not was not that smart anyway. Let us try again. We will try to rerun the application, stop and rerun. And yes, now we need to use the get message. Okay, maybe that is why it is experimental. Okay, I don't like it anyway. <laughs> I, okay, from now on, I don't like those excesses because I can see that they uh, actually ruin some stuff right there with the with Jackson and connection refused. Still okay. See now the context page is blank. That should be okay. This is incredible. This is incredible. This is the same response actually right there. Um, could it be the response? It could actually be the response HTTP. HTTP media type not acceptable. Let us try. Let us try to change the response also so it doesn't have that. So it doesn't have those excesses right there. That was a bad idea. 
and then we have to restart, and then we get a lot of errors because now it will say get or set or something like that. So we should get some. No, we didn't. I would have expected some some errors. Get message right there. The response, where was that? Down, down. Okay, the entity is okay. So just, just to check the, the JSON, maybe. Okay, we'll try again. Let us try again. Still same problem. Mm. Oh, now it said 200. Now it actually works. Now it actually works. Okay, so now we're happy again. It it works now again. It was uh, the problem was those excesses. They remove the getters so they're not called get, uh, and then of course that's of course what I liked about them. But uh, that is not possible when we when when the action wants to return to change JSON into an object and uh, the other way around, also an object into JSON, then it needs those getters, needs the setters. That's how JSON works. And JSON is what uh, what Spring uses to convert uh, to convert the object into um, into uh, yeah, in, into JSON and the other way around. You can actually see here here's the response, right? So this is my response. I can also I can run it again. My HTTP client requests it's right there. And here I can see now I've got ID2. I can save another one, then it should actually get ID3 because it's just auto-generating that message entity. So I think I'm actually pretty far. I'm actually far now. Um, no, no. The tests, yeah, of course, test, my test has a lot of errors right now because now I need to write get message because we removed that accessors from Lombok. I'm not using the accessors um, feature. I understand now why it's experimental. And I, I think that people should not use it, definitely. So that's a good reason for not using accessors. Uh, yes. Okay, so far so good. Now we came through, that was the post. So now we have created a new method. Now, now we have created some new messages with posts. I will create another video with put, where we will succeed, look at some examples for put. And then I will create some other examples again, where we look at get. And also some a new example again, where we look at delete. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, have a great evening, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.